Hi guys, welcome to the series of lectures on applied statistics. And today we shall discuss how to settle arguments based on statistical evidence. Specifically, we shall discuss how to frame a statistical hypothesis that can later be assessed as per statistical hypothesis tests. So let's get going. Suppose the speed limit on a road was 40 miles per hour, but the government changed the speed limit now to 30 miles per hour. Now the conventional wisdom states that drivers follow the new speed limit, and so the mean speed mu must be 30. However, skeptics who have observed driving behaviors doubt that. In fact, they say that the mean speed could be greater, less than, or just not equal to 30. So in statistics, we call the conventional belief as the null hypothesis or H0, whereas the skeptic's view is called the alternative hypothesis and it is represented by HA or H1. Statistic, statistical hypotheses are commonly needed in life. For example, we may need to verify if new speed limits are followed. Or we want to test if certain demographics are more susceptible to a disease. Or a pharmaceutical company wants to show that its drug significantly decreases the incidence of a disease. In each of these cases, we frame the null and the alternative hypotheses and then test. A statistical hypothesis really is a statement about a parameter of a population. For example, the null hypothesis may, may state that the mean car speed equals 30. So let us compare the null and the alternative hypotheses in some detail now. The null hypothesis may represent the default belief, whereas the alternative hypothesis says that it is time to change the default view. For example, an analogy is that everybody is innocent at the start of the court trial. But the prosecution tries to prove the defendant guilty by bringing in evidence. Or we believe that every coin is fair, that is probability of heads equals 50%. But the alternative hypothesis can be that it is not fair, so the probability is not 0.5. Another view of the null hypothesis is that it shows the belief under normal circumstances, whereas the alternative hypothesis contends that circumstances have changed because the sample data shows that. Hence, it is time to change the views. For example, normally 40% of population may have cold, but a drug company says that now that everyone has been administered vitamin C supplements, the incidence of flu must be less than 40%. Note in statistics, we frame the null hypothesis in terms of an equality. So it involves the equal sign, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Whereas the Alternative hypothesis, or H1, only has an inequality, and it represents the opposite situation. So here's a quiz to test your understanding of the null hypothesis. Pause the video and leave your answer in the comments below. Again, pause the video here and write down what is the alternative hypothesis. A hypothesis test checks whether there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis in the favor of the alternative hypothesis. Pause your video here and repeat this a few times because that is how you should state it in your statistical reports. A hypothesis test runs in a similar way to a legal trial in which a defendant is considered innocent until proven guilty. 
The null hypothesis corresponds to the proposition that the defendant is innocent, while the alternative hypothesis corresponds to the proposition that the defendant is guilty. At the start of the experiment, the null hypothesis is assumed to be true. That is, at the start of the trial, the defendant is assumed to be innocent. Then the data is collected or evidence is presented in the trial. If the data is inconsistent with or contradicts the null hypothesis, then we conclude that the null hypothesis is not true. We say that we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In legal terms, this means that if there is sufficient evidence beyond reasonable doubt against the defendant, then the innocence of the defendant is rejected and he or she is declared guilty. Alternatively, if the data is consistent with the null hypothesis, then we do not reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In legal terms, if there is insufficient evidence against the defendant, then the verdict is not guilty. Note that we never accept the null hypothesis. If our data is deemed to be consistent with the null hypothesis, then we do not have evidence against the null hypothesis. But this does not mean that we have evidence for it. If the court fails to find the defendant guilty, that does not prove that the defendant is innocent. It only proves that there is not enough evidence to find them guilty. This is why the verdict is not guilty. And it does not say that the defendant is innocent. It is therefore wrong to ever say that we accept the null hypothesis or worse, that we have proved the null hypothesis. Instead, we say that we do not reject or that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Or we say that we have no evidence against the null hypothesis. For example, suppose that H0 is that the normal body temperature equals 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say the H1 is that the body temperature is anything but 98.6 degrees. So we collect a sample of temperatures and we find that the mean of that sample indeed turns out to be 98.6 degrees. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But we have not proved that H0 equals true. It is just that so far we have not seen enough evidence to reject H0. Maybe in future we can see such evidence, but not yet. This is why sometimes people found guilty in an earlier trial can still be found guilty in a retrial. So at this point, I suggest that you take a read of this article on your screens. I have put the link to that in the description of this video. So with that, I conclude this lecture and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.